Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and a couple of days ago I made a video talking about unfair SR given to a lot of support heroes. I just kind of explained how the SR system kind of works a little bit, just gave it a little equation and just explained why support heroes are kind of treated unfair in the SR category, but just still continue on pleading that this is still a problem, especially for the people that main support heroes or that have to play support characters but aren't really treated fairly when compared to their counterparts, say like a McCree, say like a 76 or a Roadhog. Now, this video Video is gonna kind of feed off of that video but also talk about the post that was given from Scott Mercer which is the principal designer of Overwatch and he kind of went in depth with the SR system and kind of explained a little bit of how it worked and why a lot of the support heroes are being treated unfairly and I'm just gonna kind of also explain how this system works now given with this brand new information so again I'm not gonna read the whole entire post if you want to read it I'll link it down in the description below but I just wanted to grab a little section from this little blog post that that Scott Mercer did leave and it reads the determination of being quote-unquote on fire examines not just your own performance but your performance relative to your teammates the calculation of your SR adjustment after a match doesn't look at your teammates but instead it compares you to the performance of other similar skilled players with the hero across an enormous pool of competitive matches so we compare your Genji play to play of other Genjis Ana versus Ana's etc so pretty much a too long didn't read summary of that post is that on fire really does doesn't correlate with your SR gain or loss. Pretty much on fire just compares your performance with all your teams right there in that very match. But what does affect your SR gain or affect your SR loss is how your gameplay is across all that hero performances. Pretty much if you just take a 76 and just compare it to all the 76s, say relatively in your 100 SR range, then it's going to actually determine what your SR gain or loss. If you perform really well or if you perform really poor, re respectively, you're going to gain or loss SR based on that information. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but what does that really mean when they say they compare you to other players that are using that hero? Well, if you just remember back to that equation that I made a couple videos back where it just takes in consideration of your elimination, of your objective time, objective kills, everything like that, it feeds into kind of the whole average of everyone that's around relatively your same SR. So, we're going to take three heroes, right? We're going to take Soldier Center 6, we're going to take Mercy, and we're going to take Torbjorn. You'll see you later on why in the video, and we're just going to compare every Everything and just kind of show you what they mean by we take your gameplay and compare it to other heroes. So here we have a bell-shaped curve for Soldier Center 6. Now if you never took a statistic class this really won't make sense but I'll try to explain. So every single dot is a performance relatively around your SR of everybody that's playing a Soldier 76. And here marked by the red dot that is you. Now a hero like Soldier 76 I don't want to say it's too hard to do his job but what I mean by that is just you just have to simply get kills, do good on the objective, pretty much just take that that equation and just do good in the game and if you do good well compared to everybody else who is playing Soldier 76 and need I remind you 76 is a very popular hero so there's gonna be a lot of data coming through of people that are playing poorly and people that are doing awesome with them so if you just do semi decent above the average then of course you're gonna gain a lot more SR because hey you did your job and you did it better than most of the average as seen right here the line in the middle is just the simple average a lot of dots are meeting up right there in the middle but since you did a little bit better hey you get in a little bit more SR than compared to the average Soldier 76. So now here comes the problem. Now here comes the cry of, oh, I'm a healer main and I'm not getting the SR that I deserve. So if we just take a bell-shaped curve as Mercy, you're going to see here that most of the data points are shown on the left side. This term is called skew, right? Skew in the data. And most of the data points are met up on the middle. And the thing about this, right? And again, I don't know the entire code. I don't want to try to seem like I'm a know-it-all when it comes to this. But pretty much, I just want to say that Mercy, when it comes to her job, it's not hard to do her job. You just have to heal people, you just have to damage boost people, and everything like that. So compared to Soldier 76, you have to have good aim, you have to get a lot of kills. There's a lot that goes in with Soldier 76, but again, if you're just decent with him, then you're going to be better than the average since a lot of people like to use him. When compared to Mercy, a lot of people, and you see right here that there's a lot of dots on this graph, but again, it's not hard to do her job. So, when compared to the average, if you just do your average job, which is just healing people, then of course, you're going to meet up with the whole entire people around the same SR, the average, and not gain a lot of SR. I'm hoping I'm explaining this right. Again, I'm not trying to ex like give this math lecture, but I'm just trying to show you guys, because a lot of people, a lot of YouTubers are going to bring this, this post up, but not really explain it, not really show you guys. This is 
kind of how it works, taking that equation that I given in the previous video and also just showing it on an actual graph. So now that I kind of explained the healer problem and why not a lot of healers aren't gaining a lot of SR, now I want to bring up something that kind of came out of this post that isn't related to anything, which is about underrated heroes being used in competitive, but how they're gaining a lot of SR. So if this is correct, if this post is 100% legit and if it actually takes into consideration of all the heroes around your relatively same SR and determines your SR gain, well if we take a hero like Torbjorn, and again I made a video previously talking about how Torbjorn is kind of the pick of throwing, so what do people do when they pick Torbjorn? <laughs> They kind of just throw the game. They don't take the game serious. So a lot of the performance with Torbjorn is going to be skewed to the left and it's not going to be that good. So if say like a Torbjorn main who's really good goes into the game and just totally stomps on the other team, gets tons of kills, builds tons of turrets, gets tons of turrets, kills, his performance SR is going to be skewed because he's far along the average. So right here is a bell shaped curve for Torbjorn. Two things I want to mention. You as the Torbjorn main who did really well, you're going to be skewed all the way to the right. And and also the second thing, there's not a lot of data points on this graph when compared to 76 and Mercy because not a lot of people pick Torbjorn, but if they do, they're throwing the game away. And again, not every Torbjorn main throws the game away, but that's where they come into play and they do really well. And of course, they're going to gain a lot of SR. So this whole coding when it comes to the SR gain is really weird and really funky. Now that I look at the data points, it's just really weird how this whole thing works. And again, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. It's kind of confusing because again, it's a little bit more complex, right? It's it's not just a simple Excel graph. It's not just simply, oh, well, if you get this amount of kills, you gain this. It's not like that. It takes everything into consideration, your objective time, your kills, uh, how everybody else performs with that hero around your same SR. A lot goes into it when it determines your actual SR game, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. So again, sorry if this was a little bit more confusing. I just want to go a little bit in depth with it. So hopefully this video does clarify a lot of things. Is it still a problem? Yes. It still is. Even if this post says that Mer that Mercy mains or just support mains are treated fairly, technically, I feel like it's not really. I know that's an opinion. A lot of people will disagree with me, but I think it should be fixed a little bit. So, anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching more Overwatch videos to come, and bye.